Hey everybody, this is John Petrucci from Dream Theater and you're watching Loudwire. What is the first part that you wrote from that song? Do you remember? Oh my God. The first part, I don't know if I remember the first part. Where did it begin, at least in your mind? Um, you're talking about the song Metropolis. Like, Metropolis won the song. Yeah, yeah, the song. I mean, probably, you know, back in those days, um, like we were big fans of, of Queensryche and you know stuff like that and some of those kind of the main riff that I'm doing on the guitar um, uses a, a sort of technique that they did with thirds and fifths and things mm -hmm. like that and it's a very sort of signature sound so you hear that in the verses and, and stuff like that um, that probably would be around some of the first stuff I gradu gravitated towards on the guitar I bet. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so one of the pivotal moments in the song yeah. is when your tone shifts, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, is, is it a acoustic twelve string? It sounds kind of like an acoustic twelve mm -hmm. string. Yeah, you know what? It's it's actually not twelve string. The funny thing about that record and the way that re we recorded it is some of the things that I did uh, were not conventional. Like the clean guitar sound came out of a little Zoom, like a Zoom made a, a portable guitar system. That you you, okay. know, you can like put on your strap and plug into oh, it and it has sounds yeah, yeah. yeah and so and the producer at the time was like really into this thing and we like plugged in it's like basically like I don't know it's like a consumer level thing it's not even I've seen people walking like on the street playing yeah. the guitar I mean with this that was on, yeah. you know a long time ago um, and uh, you know that that's like where that sound came from so. Wow, that's so it's odd. It's sort of it, weird. It sounds like a very beautiful, clean, like 12 string acoustic to it's, me. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's possible we doubled it with acoustic. Okay. Uh, no 12 string, though. But what we did do in those days, same with like Pull Me Under, which had, had that kind of signature sound, mm. is we multi tracked the clean part. And then this was all to tape, remember? So of not digital. So we would change the tape speed mm. every time I did another overdub. So, uh, in other words, um, it would create the difference in speed and performance would create its uh, natural chorus. Wow. So we did like six different overdubs of the same part, and then you get this like pull me under sound, this beautiful chorusing sound. So same, so it was the same sound on Metropolis and Take the Time, songs like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then later in the song, your tone gets very like, uh, old school video gamey. Like it, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. it reminds me of like the old Sega Genesis. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> so, uh, which, I've done, which I've written music for. Sega Genesis? Sega Saturn, I wrote Oh, music. the Saturn, yeah. I remember that thing. What did you write for? I wrote for a game called Necronomicon. Is that like an Evil Dead game? Or yeah, I guess. I, don't, I never actually wow. played the game, but I, I wrote, to yeah, if you, if you get the game, you can hear. It's got to be on YouTube by now. Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, so how did you go about getting yeah. that kind of video game tone? Well, I think it's more like in the technique and the parts, because the tone mm -hmm. is just a normal like lead guitar sound. Okay. Yeah, so I think it's kind of like in the nature of the parts. You know, some, there's some things where we do dissonant harmonies where we're playing like a minor second away from each other, um, which gives like that weird sort of video game thing. And also some of the, like the faster kind of more... I don't know what you, they're like these sort of bubbly like licks yeah. and thing. It kind of lends itself to more video game sounds. But the actual tone, I mean, really it's just a normal same lead sound I would use on a solo in Pull Me Under or something. But when we were doing scenes from memory, we, you know, Metropolis uh, on images always said part one. Yes. So we're like, it's the perfect place for part two. So we very loosely kind of tied in the story to that. We, it, it was a stretch. We had to make some, we had to make some executive calls to make it make sense. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of a stretch, I found one fan theory online that I'd like to throw by gotcha. you to see if there's any validity to it. Does it involve Owen Wilson? It does not. Okay. That was my theory. Right. One person says mm -hmm. that the song is structured to fit perfectly in between Home and Dance of Eternity. Wow. Is that apparently wow. <laughs> Home goes right into it? and then right into Dance of Eternity. And apparently, the theory was that that was the plan. Well, if that was the plan, then we're geniuses. Because, now, I, you know what? I, stuff like that is so interesting for me to hear. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, I, the fact that things work out that way, it's just a weird coincidence. It, 
definitely was not purposely done that way. Awesome. But that's, I, I, I love hearing about stuff like that, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Even if it's not true, it's, it's right. always fun to, yeah. yeah. It's awesome.